So I want to talk about what's going on in Sudan and the Congo. There have been plenty of other creators that are putting out good content. And I'm only sharing so that this gets to another side of social media that might not be seeing these things. So what's going on in Sudan, the crisis in Sudan, what is happening and how to help? Sudan tops the IRC's 2024 watch list of countries that are likely to experience a deteriorating humanitarian crisis. Each year, the International Rescue Committee's emergency watch list analyzes which countries are more, most likely to experience a deteriorating humanitarian crisis. This year, Sudan tops the list due to escalating conflict, mass displacement, an economic crisis, and a near collapse of healthcare services. The power struggle between the Sudanese Armed Forces, SAF, and the Rapid Support Forces, RSF, erupted into a large-scale conflict in April 2023 and has been driving humanitarian needs in the country ever since. And how often have, are we hearing about this in mainstream media here in the United States? Renewed clashes broke out in Al Jazeera State in December 2023, triggering a new round of displacements and interruptions of humanitarian operations. The IRC and other humanitarian organizations were forced to relocate their staff. Before the conflict, Sudan was already experiencing a severe humanitarian crisis. Long-term political instability and economic pressures meant that 15.8 million people were in need of humanitarian aid. The conflict has only exacerbated these conditions, leaving almost 25 million people, more than half of Sudan's population, in need. Amidst the mass displacement and reports of mass unalivings, humanitarian access has been severely curtailed, making it, making it extremely hard for aid to reach vulnerable communities. Here's a picture of a lady and her two daughters that are displaced. They're staying at a shelter. So what to do? Before the outbreak of conflict, Sudan was already facing a humanitarian crisis due to extreme weather shocks, social and political unrest, and rising food prices that continue to drive poverty, hunger, and displacement. So have you heard about what's going on in Sudan? Let me know in the comments if you've heard either, I mean, any of this. So I either make this video in English or make it in Korean, but uh, I chose English because apparently... It's an international language, but yet nobody listens. All I see is just the Sudanese people talking about what's going on in Sudan. And I would just love for that to change. And I know that the world is full of problems right now, wars and crimes that you can't even speak of, right? You can't even speak of that we've seen with our own eyes. But I really need from the world to have the same energy towards every crime that's been currently happening in Sudan, in, in Palestine, in everywhere. Because horrible is still horrible. A war crime remains a war crime, no matter where you're from, what do you look like, or what nationality you hold. And us as humans, we need to have the same energy towards each and every violation of humanity there is. And I'm telling you today, I'm going to share what kind of violations are happening in Sudan. And I really hope for the rest of the humans to have that energy to talk about it and raise that awareness. And for us as humans to stick together, because obviously from what we've seen this year is that we've all we got. No one else is listening. And you know what I was thinking? I never actually came out and said, I have a mental health issue or I'm suffering mentally because the way I was raised in Sudan, is that you fix your own problems. You don't ask people for help like that. If you have an issue, fix it yourself. So it was like kind of a taboo. We never really talked about mental health. But I can just still see us as Sudanese are so humbled and proud that we're not asking for help, which we should. Because you know what? Our struggles and what we're going through matters too. So let me tell you about the humanitarian catastrophe, to say the least, that is going on in Sudan right now. 19 million children are out of school. Why? Because 6.7 million are displaced from Sudan. 70 to 80% of the hospitals are no longer operating. And there is more than 7,000 cases of cholera in Sudan. 24 million plus need critical humanitarian aid. And 20.3 million are dying because of hunger. Once upon a time, we were called Salat al Ghizal al Alam, which basically means we were the food basket of the world. We've been here for eight months now. This whole situation has been going on for eight months 
I've seen my own family get displaced from Sudan. My own cousins dropped out of school. Their whole entire hard work, effort in life just saw it disappear like that. And I've been showing up to work for eight months, acting like I can do this by myself. But actually, we need the world to stand by us. We need the world to speak about Sudan and never shut the fuck up. This morning and a couple of days ago, I was posting photos of Niala, a town in Darfur. And I was enjoying the beauty of home, I guess, you know. And just about 30 minutes ago, I learned that this morning in Sudan time, there has been an airstrike that has been launched in the town of Niala that has been destroyed homes. It has unalived around 15 people so far. Um, so many people are injured. There's still, we don't have full numbers or anything, but please keep your eyes on Sudan, keep your eyes on Darfur, specifically the, I'm gonna show you a little glimpse of what's happening right now. <laughs> You say you love perfumes that smell like the Middle East and that come from the Middle East, but you won't even discuss any of the humanitarian crises taking place in the Middle East. And I'm not just talking about Palestine, Sudan as well. Sudan is not in the Middle East, but the atrocities being committed in Sudan by the RSF are being funded by the UAE, which is located in the Middle East. Home to Dubai, home to all the luxury that you girlies love to go and flaunt and bathe in, that is who is funding the atrocities taking place in Sudan right now. So just as we're calling out the girlies who sprinkle Zatar and everything and refuse to talk about Palestine, we too will be calling out the people who go to Dubai, bathe in Arab perfumes, bathe in the gold jewelry, yet have nothing to say about Sudan. I'm working on a video on the UAE's involvement in Sudan, so stay tuned for that. However, in the meantime, you can go and check out Red Mad's post on Instagram about how to boycott in support of Sudan. And please follow these amazing, wonderful creators for more updates on Sudan. Now let's talk about what's going on in Congo. Decades of clashes between armed groups, widespread violations of human rights, and devastating events of gender-based violence have displaced 6.1 million people within the Democratic Republic of the Congo. 2024 population planning figures, refugees and asylum seekers in Angola, Burundi, and the Republic of the Congo, Uganda, the Republic of Tanzania, and Zambia, it totals um, 965,800 IDPs, um, 6.1 million refugee and IDP returnees, 2.3 million refugees and asylum seekers in the Democratic Republic of Congo, um, a little over 500,000. As a result of an alarming resurgence of violence generated by armed groups, 5.8 million people are displaced across the provinces of Ituri, North Kivu, South Kivu, and Tenga, Tanganyika, please forgive me, in the east of Democratic Republic of the Congo, 2024 situation overview. The emergency of the Democratic Republic of the Congo is one of the most complex humanitarian crises in the world and one we don't really hear about because what are we hearing about right now? Decades of clashes between armed groups, widespread violations of human rights, and devastating instances of gender-based violence have caused unprecedented levels of protection needs, vulnerabilities and risk, displacement, displacing 6.1 million people within the country and forcing 1 million to seek asylum across Africa. At the same time, the DRC hosts more than half a million refugees from neighboring com uh, countries. How are they hosting people if they can't? Okay, okay, okay. Since March, 2022, Insecurity in the eastern provinces has reached new heights, leading to an exponential rise in protection events, especially those involving sexual violence and severe restrictions to, human, to the humanitarian space. As a result of the concerning situation in June 2023, an interagency standing committee system-wide scale-up was activated for eastern DRC. A month later, 24 UN entities came together to urge immediate action to protect um, women and girls. 
However, the response has been challenging and the situation is aggravated by inflation, epidemics, natural hazards, food insecurity, and funding constraints. The, di- the drivers of displacement in the DRC are expected to worsen in late 2023 and 2024, with tensions emerging from the withdrawal of UNESCO and the presidential elections in December, likely to pro- um, prolong displacement within the country and drive people into neighboring countries as refugees. In 2024, community-based protection and protection monitoring, analysis and reporting, health, education, and livelihoods will remain key priority um, response areas, and UNHRC will continue to play a leadership and advocacy role in protection, shelter, and non-food items, and camp coordination and camp management clusters in the DRC. In particular, the organization will strengthen gender-based violence prevention, risk mitigation, and response mechanisms, disability inclusion, gender equality, in addition to safeguarding the rights and forcibly displace, especially the women and girls. Um, UNHRC, HCR, will also seek to ensure that at least 60% of IDPs and all IDP returnees are living in habitable housing. So have you guys heard about what's going on in Congo? On my platforms, I've shared a couple of times, but no telling if people are actually seeing these things, but they need to be seen. Go ahead, jump in the comments. Let me know. Um, Just answer the question. Have you seen what's going on? And don't forget to share. Share from your side of the Internet so that more and more people can see that there are other um, mass atrocities going on around the world that are not just in the, the spaces that, um, that our mainstream media are showing. We need to talk about the silent genocide happening in Congo. The exploitation of Congolese people has claimed millions of lives and the media is not talking about it at all. In fact, around every hour 48 women are sexually assaulted, 6 million Congolese people have lost their lives over the past decade, and millions more have been displaced. Also, the Western world can continue to benefit off of Congo's natural resources like cobalt. The land of Congo has the largest amount of cobalt, which is a critical mineral used in technology. Western nations like the US, the UK and France have given military and financial aid to groups in Rwanda and Uganda to invade cobalt-rich areas. And because of these invasions, Congolese people are either killed or enslaved and forced to mine cobalt, which includes pregnant women and children. Genocides and crimes against humanity that take place in Africa are never covered in the media as much as other events.